I think it's not a surprise to you at this point that I am not a fan of the British. They're snobby, they're annoying, they're rich, but most of all, they're not, uh, they have a history of not being nice to types of people. In that they were an empire, and they were, and they were one of the big boys of colonization. But the one thing that the British is definitely the best at is comedy. Case in point, one of the best and funniest comedies of all time, Faulty Towers. This is one of the funniest, stupid, but such a fantastic show that I'll definitely rewatch any time I get the chance to. For it, it was just taken off Netflix, but I have it on the Great Grey Box. So, yeah, this is a fantastic show. And I'm definitely going to be talking about it on the Wikipedia, uh, while showing the Wikipedia page, because as you know at this point, I can't show any clips, or otherwise they'll get copyrighted. I can only show clips at the beginning, and at the end, maybe. So, yeah, on to Wikipedia we go. And here we are with Wikipedia. So yeah, the, it's basically about this guy called Basil Fawlty, played by John Cleese, who used to be part of, uh... What was this? Monty Python's Flying Circus. Or just Monty Python in general. But he left in season 4 uh, for the original show and then he started to make this show. And as you can probably tell, it became very successful. Now I was shocked to discover that's actually a lot shorter than it is. It's only 2 seasons and it's only 12 episodes long. And I thought this was like a very long show, but apparently British sitcoms are always shorter than American ones because American ones are full uh, seasons. But hey, at least it's stuck in the past, unfortunately. <laughs> it's a lot shorter than it is. Oh wait, no, there's a sequel series, never mind. So I guess it's not stuck in the past. Yes, yeah, so it's about this guy called Basil Fawlty, uh, who is who, who runs a hotel called Fawlty Towers with his wife, Sybil, uh, and has a chambermaid named Polly, and uh, a Spanish uh, waiter named Manuel, who Basil constantly uh, abuses. <laughs> Uh, they have lots of other different characters uh, in the hotel. Some new ones, some uh, some permanent hotel owners. It's a very uh, has very interesting characters. Also, since this was made in the seventies, one character says the N word three times in the same episode in like thirty seconds, and that made me laugh because uh, this is a time where. Uh, British television was not as restrictive as it is now. But in America, this would be a no-go. But now in cinemas, it would be a yes-go. But in the UK, nope. They could just use it there there, and not get in trouble for it. Of course, now they would probably get it censored. But, well, you know what they say. Life sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's basically all I can think of. Yeah, so... What are the positives of the show? It's hilarious. That's kind of uh, on the point. But what I think of the characters, they're also pretty good. Uh, Basil is just one of those types of characters that you just love to hate. Uh, he's such a rude, snobbyish jackass who only cares about himself and his hotel. But you still laugh at his escapades with the others. Manuel is also the second funniest character. His struggle with English and the way he reacts upon everyone else is just hysterical. Now, of course, the other two characters, Sybil and Polly, are fine. Another really funny character is uh, uh, Major Gowen, who was an old uh, person who lives in a hotel. And Basil actually likes him. Of course, uh, we can't talk about this show without talking about... The episodes themselves, and there are, and every episode is hilar is hilarious in their own right. But I feel like the funniest one is probably this one, the Germans. This is an absolutely hysterical uh, episode. This is one of the funniest episodes of any show I've ever seen in my life. So basically, uh, some Germans are coming to the hotel. 
Uh, and he basically says, don't mention the war. But he gets uh, hit uh, with a moose head that's had to be hang on the wall. And he's put into hospital. But naturally, he goes back to the hotel with an injured head and a bit of a loose screw. And he keeps mentioning the war in front of the Germans. And he does a funny walk of Adolf Hitler, as you can see right there. It is an absolutely hilarious, like, I don't know, I don't know what John Cleese and Connie Booth were smoking when coming up with this idea, but by God, it was got to be some good. <clears throat> yeah, so, of course, every episode, uh, this episode was loved by everybody, but of course not everybody, because, you know. Of the whole dumb mention the war German Hitler walk thing. Yeah, it was kinda kind of inevitable for an episode like this to be uh frowned upon, but what do I care? This is this is Faulty Towers, this is British comedy. Now of course the show ended very quickly. Uh episode twelve. I feel like in season two, the hotel really started to just go completely nuts. Uh Uh, yeah, so the, uh, so the hotel is completely, uh, I feel like by the, uh, final episode, the hotel is just shut down off, uh, off screen. That's my most likely theory of what happened. Do I have any negatives with this show? I mean, no, what do you think? Of course not. This is like one of the most perfect shows of all time. It could have been a little, it could have had a bit more episodes. There could have been a bit more unique ideas of what to do or what to happen. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like it had a really good run by itself. There are a lot of other British comedies that definitely have its influence, like Only Fools and Horses, The IT Crowd, tons of others. I've only seen The IT Crowd, though. I should definitely get to watching. Only Fools and Horses. I have that on the box as well. But yeah, that's my only negative. The fact that it's only two, 12 episodes long. That's like... It's shorter than goddamn Clone High. And that was only 13 episodes. And that was another culturally... A uh, culturally... Impactive animated show. The point is, this is an absolutely hysterical episode with... Uh, with not very likable characters that are supposed are still hilarious, really funny ideas, a hysterical ending, and just overall really amazing show. I love this show. It's literally like I don't even know what to. Th I'm literally watching it right now as I'm making the video. This is just a, such, such a funny show. I definitely highly recommend this. Uh, only if you can handle John Cleese's amazing energy put into everything he says. But I do have a miss. I am very overjoyed that the Queen is uh, gone. Because now this show will no longer have to be looked down upon as not applicable for modern day. Oh wait, I forgot. There's a king now. And kings are even more restrictive than queens. <laughs> How silly of me. Well, now this show is going to be viewed as uh, looked down upon even more now. I mean, the auditors just love me. I, I I just love making fun of the. Uh, I just love making fun of the royalty in the UK. It's it's such fun. Say, do you hear that? Oh, for goodness' sake, not again. You've got to be goddamn freaking kidding me!